Well, hello again and welcome back. As you can see, we've moved outdoors into a Glendale neighborhood where we're actually going to be watching a crew putting slurry seal down on the streets. With me right now are Max Morales from our Public Works Department and Charletha Johnson, who's one of our engineers out of the Glendale Engineering Department. Welcome and thank you for joining me. Thank, thank you. you, it's good to be here. Thank so Max, I want to first talk about potholes. That's kind of where to, a place to start. We get a lot of calls in the council office. I'm sure you get a lot more in your office about places that need to have potholes repaired. We do. In fact, we, uh, we rely on a lot of the citizens to call in those potholes because if we don't know where they are, we can't go fill them. So we want to thank the citizens for doing that and keep it up. We're out potholing every single day, uh, trying to keep up, and, and I think our crew do, crews do a great job. Now, streets normally fail from the bottom up. Something happens to the subgrade, gets wet, the pavement starts to move, and then you get a chunk of asphalt coming up, and then a pothole develops. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, you call us, we go out, we fill it temporarily with potholes, a uh, pothole patch we call it. And uh, the weather affects the amount of potholes we get. Uh, after every rain, we get very, very busy. <laughs> I've so. noticed there seem to be more potholes and more calls in our office too yeah. after the rains. And that's because the water gets underneath and then the pavement flexes and comes loose. Is that what happens? That's exactly right. right. So, um, and they seem to grow every time, you know, uh, we go out to fill two, we find three or four more and then some along the way but weather definitely affects how streets deteriorate. So you said we're up potholing. We have crews out every day filling potholes. How many a year do we address? Uh, last year we did 11,000, wow. uh, give or take, and we're, we're uh, on that track to do uh, almost as much. Uh, obviously, as we start to maintain our streets and slurry and mill and overlay and do those kinds of streets to those pothole heavy areas, we'll go out to those areas less. So mm -hmm. yeah, doing less, um, I brag about the amount of potholes we do sometimes, but doing less, I would even be more proud of. Okay, so. because a pothole is a sign that a street is starting to fail. Yes, that's and the we beginning. Wanna, our goal is to keep the streets up at a level where potholes don't occur. That's exactly right. Normally, like many things in life, uh, they require routine maintenance. If, if you wait till your car engine blows and you want to, then you decide to change the oil, it's usually too late <laughs> by then and you gotta rebuild the engine. So streets uh, are no different. If you need a regular maintenance routine before you get them to that stage where you need to do total reconstruction. Okay, great. Now, Char, um, to keep the water from getting down into the street and to address a street that maybe is starting to get potholes, we do something called crack sealing. Can you tell me about that? That is correct. Crack sealing is one of the pavement preservation measures that we've taken, actually apply here in the city. And in order to, like you said, in order to prevent the subgrade from getting wet with water, we would crack seal the cracks. Mm -hmm. So with that, the pavement becomes preserved for up to three to five years. We have additional pavement life cycle. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the first things that we like to do is to do a crack seal, which is cost efficient. Yeah. So using the crack seal to keep the water from getting in once the cracks start appearing is a way to help preserve the life of the street. That's what comes right. after a crack seal? What would be the next step of preservation? The next a natural progression would be your slurry seal, which is what we're doing out here today, the, the crews are doing out here. So with the slurry seal, it's a liquid asphalt, so to speak. And so we would lay that on top of our existing asphalt layers. And it, it consists of an ionic type of a compound, as well as a fine aggregate, which is sand, and also water. And it actually is 10 times less as far as cost-wise with our mill and overlay, and it lasts up to about seven years. Okay. And then, like today, before you put the slurry down, you'd, the crew would come out ahead of time, do any repairs, spot repairs that the street that might That is correct. Need. We'll do asphalt repairs, we'll do concrete repairs in order to prepare the pavement for the slurry seal. Okay. So that gives us an extra longevity for the pavement. And then you also cover cover up the manhole covers in the street correct. so that doesn't all get slurried over. That is correct. Yeah. So we do protective measures on our valley gutters and then our manholes and our utilities and things okay. of that nature. Now this side of the street got done yesterday and it's had a chance to cool and set up. They've kept traffic off of it for the most part, but they'll soon be switching over so they can come through and do the second side of the street in a little bit. Yes. So as you'll notice, Max and I have put on our safety vest because the equipment has actually moved onto the street to finish the other side. So Max, talk a little bit about workplace safety. Well, workplace safety uh, and any, any type of safety is very, very important, as you know. Work zone injuries are among the highest in the nation uh, amongst all cat other categories combined. So we really appreciate your patience as the crews come through 
and be cautious, be careful of their activity because they're busy trying to get your street done and uh, get out of there. So please work with us and uh, be wary of the safety involved. As I say, give the guys a break, right? Yeah. Give them a break. Now, Max, can you briefly explain how this slurry seal machine works? It's very simple. This material gets put into a hopper, gets dumped on a sled, and the sled basically just kind of smooths it evenly across the street. And you'll see some guys on each side of that kind of keeping the overflow from happening, and they'll kind of push it back into the street. So the hopper in this case is that dump truck or whatever that runs in front. The sled's then attached to the back right. of it, and it feeds the sled the at, at the rate that the sled is moving, spreads it out, and then the guys on the side just try to make sure that we get a nice, neat job. And Right, and that's very important, that speed you talked about, because if you slow down, you're going to get too much in one spot. If you go too fast, it's going to be too thin. Right. So that rate is very important in the application of slurry. So well, we talked a little bit ago about how weather affects the streets, but weather also affects the repairing of the streets. It does. You, uh, basically, you don't want to put slurry down when it's too cold or too hot. If it's too hot, it stays wet too long and the traffic spreads it everywhere. Uh, if it's too cold, it's too brittle and you want a nice uh, mat. So uh, fortunately here we got a, a, good, a lot of good weather all the time, uh, but in the dead of summer we don't want to be slurry, it's too hot. You'll notice that it takes a lot to uh, successfully put down a slurry treatment on a street. A lot of act crews and activities do. I ask again that you be careful driving around those crews. You'll notice there's a guy in the end and he's spreading material over the old material so we have a nice overlap so water doesn't get under the street at that point. So let's say a street's farther gone than what slurry seal can take care of. Mm -hmm. What's the next level of of protection or rehabilitation? The next level will be our mill and overlay, which is what I mentioned. That's the most costlier with, between the crack seal and the slurry seal. And if a street is shown degradation on the surface as well as the subgrade, exhibits a lot of potholes and a lot of cracking, alligator cracking, then we will want to do a mill and overlay. And so with that, we will do a two to three inch milling, which is what we'll call it. We'll grind up the top of the surface down almost to the subgrade, and then we will overlay it with a new material. And so that would pretty much preserve the pavement for about 10 years. Okay, so basically we go in and grind up and remove the top two, maybe three inches of the asphalt, come back behind it and lay down brand new asphalt, uh, just like it was when the street was put in, and that's good for 10 to 15 years that is with correct. proper maintenance. That is correct. And then we also do any type of utility adjustments and our ADA ramps and valley gutters and sidewalks with that repair. With that repair. Exactly. Okay, great. So once we get our streets up to the level that we know our residents want and actually do deserve, there's some preservation processes that we can do to what looks like a perfectly good street mm -hmm. that helps make it last longer. What would those be? Um, we have done pavement preservation such as fog seal and micro seal. Micro seal is more of a cold mix similar to slurry seal. We normally do those on our arterials or collector streets, higher volume, higher traffic. Uh, with the fog seal, that's more like uh, so like a paint coat that we're putting on the streets. If the streets exhibit that there is some dryness and the, the fine aggregates have worn away, then we'll do a fog seal and that will preserve the pavement for uh, probably around the same amount of years as a slurry seal, but it's much cheaper. So I would equate it to putting lotion on your skin when you dry out, you know, the pavement dries out, you know, with the sun and everything. And so in order to hydrate it, we'll put the fog seal as a way to preserve the pavement. Now, Max, I remember years ago, we used to do something called chip sealing. Now, um, and that used to wreak havoc with people's windshields and all of that. Do we do that particular te uh, technique some area, anymore? Some areas of Valley are doing chip seal. They're calling it fast aggregate surface treatment, but uh, what that does is allow you to put a, a heavier aggregate. For example, this is, you might hear the term type two slurry, and that's what we're putting down now. Type two refers to the size of aggregate. It's two eighths of an inch, so a quarter inch thick, uh, maximum size of, of rock that's in this emulsion, um, provides that good wearing surface. The chip seals are the fast aggregate surface treatments, a little bit thicker, uh, provide a, a thicker mat, better wearing surface, more long term, but you're right, it does wreak havoc with the windshields. So what we're so doing in Glendale is not that. There's no reason that. that our I residents should be concerned that they're gonna have uh, little stones thrown up into their windshields and have, have claims on their insurance. That's so. correct. At this time, we do not do chip seals. All right, so. good. I'm glad to hear that because, you know, I don't want to have to deal with the issues that chip sealing can raise, so. Now, there's a good. lot of benefits to chip sealing, and we might do pilots here and there. Uh, 
better quality control measures have taken place where you don't get that aggregate loss that you used to. Uh, you don't get all that raveling. Uh, we know now you better sweep up right away. So some methods and application methods and, uh, are such now that that's not as big a problem. Um, so we may do a pilot here and there just to see. Okay. Obviously we want to use every resource and uh, technique necessary <laughs> to uh, maximize the life of our streets. And if that's one in the future, we may, you may see it coming, but right now we do not do that. Well, I'll call that Chip Seal 2.0, okay. where, <laughs> where we do it better than how it's been done in the past. Absolutely. So maybe you could discuss with me what it actually takes to make up a street, the various layers starting with the base, like if a new street was going in or we're replacing a street, how does that get Well, laid out? obviously the base, in my opinion, is the most important part of a street. You know, to replace a street is very costly. And so uh, one of our, the assets in the city of Glendale, that's the most costly to replace. So we want to put efforts to maintain it so it lasts as long as it can before we have to totally reconstruct. So starting with a good base uh, is very, very important. A uh, good, well-compacted base. Majors and arterials, busier streets, you get a bit thicker. You might want to pave that in two or three lifts, maybe five inches thick, um, two inches or three inches at a time. Uh, this street's probably two inches thick. It came down in one layer. Okay. Uh, and as you can see, the, uh, it's been crack sealed before, slurry seal. I think Char talked about that. Mm -hmm. um, and then we did some local area repairs also. So once we get that better wearing surface and that uh, layer that's going to prevent water intrusion to get to that important subgrade, mm -hmm. um, this street will be much better and last, last longer. So. Okay. Char, you had mentioned concrete repair and, yes. and other concrete work we do Absolutely. in conjunction with streets. So concrete would be the curb, the gutter, and maybe the sidewalk part of the thoroughfare. Tell that me is more correct. About that. Um, normally with our mill and overlay projects, the ramps, the ADA ramps is what we call them, the, the corner ramps, is what we upgrade during the mill and overlay process. So that's one form of concrete repair. Another concrete repair would be the curbs and the sidewalks or the valley gutters. Um, anything that affects our drainage and pedestrian flow and traffic on a pedestrian side. Okay, and by ADA, of course, that refers to the Americans with Disabilities Act. Yes. It's a federal act, and a, a portion of the money that we get for street repair and, and the work that we do is federal dollars, so we're tied into that, which is a good thing for our community as well, for those people in the community that need that, whether they're in a wheelchair, a motorized wheelchair, a yes. motorized scooter, um, any of those type, or even if you're just walking down the street exactly. dragging your luggage behind you, yes. then, uh, or a cart of any kind, then having those ADA ramps is a good thing to have. Yes, very valuable, and they, they also help to avoid any tripping hazards and things of that nature. So they're very important for just the overall transportation system within the, within the city. So before I leave the program today, I want to talk a little bit about what we do ahead of time before a street project, how we communicate with neighborhoods, and also what neighbors can do to, to make the day go easier. So what, where do we start? A big part of the success of our programs is cooperation with the neighbors, getting the vehicles off the street, uh, letting, letting them know what time frame we're going to be there so they can coordinate their schedules around that. And obviously when we slurry seal the street, we want all the cars off, so we do a lot of uh, marketing and door hangers and mailers to notify every resident on that street when we're going to be there and why and what's going to be happening. And, and normally sure. for our pavement management projects we have hired an outside consultants to help us with our public outreach which has been very helpful and um, crucial to the success of our projects. So at the beginning of the project they're there. They put out the message boards and the message signs in coordination with the contractor and they have a 24-hour hotline so they're available to answer any complaints and calls 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So they're there throughout the duration of the project and um, providing updates from the community and to the project manager as well as to the contractor on anything that we should be aware of. So we do our best to give the neighbors plenty of notice that a project is coming, where they could park as an alternative location during the project so that they can have a place to put their car if they're the first ones out of the neighborhood in the morning exactly. and uh, where they can park if they come home at night and the street is still wet. Yes. So. Okay, so great. For more information, is there a phone number and a website? Or? Uh, there is. For any street maintenance concerns, just go on to our City of Glendale uh, website and go to the Streets Department and it'll be right there. I think it's streetmaintenancenconcerns.com and our pothole hotline and like I said earlier, we really rely on the residents to let us know where those are so we can address them right away. It's 623-930-2670. Okay, great. Anything else? That's a wrap then. Thanks. Okay. Thank and thank you for joining me today on Glendale Today. I hope you've learned a lot more about streets 
and our street maintenance and preservation program. So until next time, I'm Bart Turner, Glendale City Council, and we'll see you on Glendale Today.